Talking Shit. Welcome back to Talking Shit. It's inside the Sports Interaction Studio on this fine Wednesday afternoon at the time of recording. I'm your host, Prince Huda, and I'm joined as always by Johnny Junta. I'll kick it to you first. Johnny, how are you doing this fine Wednesday? Doing good, man. Listen, we got Canada versus Colombia on right now. Our okay. women trying to uh, do the impossible and uh, make the knockout round after getting absolutely shafted by uh, the Olympic Committee. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they do here, man. It's the biggest second half of our lives, some are saying. Yeah, quite a bit of Olympics underway right now. Canada, yeah. Colombia, uh, USA is playing South Sudan men's basketball. We'll talk a little bit about men's basketball. We'll talk some Spygate stuff. And Toronto Blue Jays also playing right now, I believe, as well. No, so, that game ended. They lost. The game ended. They lost 10-4, I believe. Yeah. So, yeah, tough sledding on their side. But uh, overall, outside of the sports world, how are you doing today? Good. It's good. I mean, the it is uncomfortably hot outside. Like, oh, yeah. this is the part of the year where I just absolutely hate, like, August. It is just so goddamn hot. It's just, it's miserable. It's absolutely miserable seeing, like, just going outside and just immediate, like, you just feel like you're just sweating like crazy. I feel that. Yeah, to peel back the curtain a little bit, it's spoiling in here. It was actually 23 and a half degrees in this studio before we started recording, so we had to go for a walk. But, uh, yeah, feeling sweaty, but feeling feeling awake, that's for sure here. Yeah, the tough thing is you guys can't turn on fans in there because it's like <laughs> the mics will pick them up. So you're just in, like... Uh, a point of no return with how hot it is in there. Yeah, it's a tight space, right? You've been here, you know, for those yeah. that don't know, we're in a nice studio here. Uh, yeah, a lot of great tech in here, so hard to fit a fan, but uh, seems like the weather's cooling down now in here, but yeah, not looking forward to going outside later, but you know, this is the time of year, like by the time we hit December, January, you'd be like, fuck, I wish it was 29 degrees outside, so I can't be too greedy. Yeah, I'm with you there. I, that's just crazy. There's no AC. That's Man, I I like my I used to drive a car with no AC like two years ago, and it was the most insane thing I've ever done. I don't know how I did it, to be honest. I mean, it's it makes financial sense in Canada because like, let's say seven eight months of the year you don't need it, but those five four five months, that's when you really feel it. Yeah, I mean, listen, yeah, I the thing is, is like the summers are so so hot here, and the winters are so so cold. Like it's like there's no really in between. Maybe the fall. That's why I think the fall is like the greatest uh, time of the year. It's shorter, but the fall rocks. Yeah, I agree. I think those in betweens are the best here. But I mean, last year it didn't get really cold till like post Thanksgiving. So yeah, everyone's like, oh, summer's wrapping up. It's like yeah, if you're in school, summer's wrapping up. But if you're a grown man, like the three of us are, you know, summer doesn't end till October, whenever we say it ends. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Oh. And especially once football season hits, that's when you know summer, uh, summer's starting to come in yeah. hot here. Yeah, no, that's for sure. That's for sure. But speaking of summer, we got some summer Olympics going on right now. Uh, you touched on Canada a little bit there. I mean, we were really just scratching the surface with this topic last week at the time of recording. Not a lot of details were out at the time. We were kind of just, you know, recapping what we knew. But Canada Spygate 2.0. I mean, the women's soccer team was caught flying drones over the New Zealand squad, practicing, maybe getting some intel, maybe stealing some plays. And the scandal obviously escalated to a point where head coach had to step down and Canada received a six-point deduction in the women's soccer qualifiers. And somehow, some way, they still might make the next round. Uh, now having the full information and the gist of this story, Johnny, what's your take on this whole uh, this whole fiasco. It's such a crazy, like, I do feel bad, like, for the players. Like, they had no involvement. They're playing in the Olympics, like, which is obviously a prestigious thing to do. And <laughs> you just get six points stolen from you no matter what. Like, uh, I feel terrible for the women. It sucks. And it just, it's just such a terrible, terrible spot to be in because um, people above you screwed up and decided to be cowards and cheat it, it just it's bananas I, I truly can't believe it see i find it hard to believe that the players weren't you know knowing of it all because especially now that stuff's coming out that this wasn't exclusive to this tournament there's been stuff allegedly going on for years whether it's men women's it's i find it hard to believe that not a single player on the team didn't know about it and it wasn't discussed in the locker room at some point the thing is, there's so many people um, above you, you know, it's like when you're a player, you're not really paying attention to what like the the management's doing. Like you're just really just playing the sport. It's like I, 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 I would be under the belief that 99% of them had no idea. 
Okay, that that's yeah. fair. I think, yeah, I, I'd imagine it maybe slips through the grapevine. People pretend they want to hear it when they don't, but yeah, it it is interesting because they did win the gold medal in 2020. You know, this was a team people were like, can win again. A real good feel good story for the country is now turned into cheaters. Like you go to the yeah. every time they play a game or they post on social media, you go to the comment section, drone, spygate, cheater, all this stuff. Like even if they do somehow manage to win this tournament, I don't think it will lift this uh this punishment that has been sent down and and these these allegations that have come out to be true. Is there like an actual whistleblower that came out? I saw that on social media. Like someone said People are pointing the fingers at journalists, which is interesting. Oh, like okay. I think like that the Canadian journalists diving into the story has made it more popular than it is. Yeah, but I believe they were caught. Like the drone was caught on the New Zealand side. That's hilarious. Like cheating for soccer is bananas. Like I understand like you're you're cheating in in football and like you're trying to get like a team's playbook, but in soccer it's like you know the formation, you know what they're doing. It's like. I do not see a purpose for doing it in soccer. Maybe I just don't know ball, but doing it in soccer is crazy out of all sports. Yeah, I think like when you think what the Patriots did, seeing plays in football, you see how defenses line up, how offenses are going to line up, what plays are going to run. Yeah. I never played soccer, so I don't know. Like, is that something you can read? Like you can read teams offensively and defensively from looking at footage of plays? Like I, I just find that really bizarre. Yeah, me too. It's like I, I don't... I don't know. Maybe I just don't know ball. Maybe it's like easier to cheat in soccer and it gives you a massive advantage and I don't know nothing about it, but I just don't see a reason to cheat when you know formations going into games. You know, I, I, I just, I'm not quite sure. I, I, uh, I think it makes that much sense. It, again, it's really dumb to cheat period, but with a drone is bananas. So I, I, I'm looking forward to the E60 documentary coming out about it probably in like two years that fully breaks it down and we know everything because that's going to be electric stuff. Yeah, because the reports today is FIFA, like Canada appealed it and obviously FIFA denied it. But there's allegations that the practice of using drones, I'm just reading an article here, stems back to when John Herdman was the head coach of the women's national team back when it was 2011. So they that was won a long time ago, yeah. In the Olympics in 2012 and 2016, they're alleging that this shit's been going on for years. So this is, they just finally got caught, but this could be something whole deeper bag that maybe next week, we could be talking about something completely different here. Yeah, I it, it's uh I know there's one like speaking about cheating like there's a Michigan documentary coming out on Netflix about uh that coach that cheated um that went to like games and studied the playbooks and stuff. Um I'm looking forward to seeing this one. This documentary that's going to be assuming going to come out whenever uh about the cheating scandal with Team Canada because it, it is objectively funny like just hearing the words Canada and cheating. Like I I I can't believe that like we're one of the kind like one of the countries that was caught cheating at the goddamn Olympics. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I feel like, like I wonder, like, are ESPN are these are these major sports outlets in other countries caring about this as much as we are? Like, is Canada and Canadian sports media making a bigger deal out of this than it should be? Like, obviously they got caught cheating, but how much of an advantage does spying on another team's practices give in a soccer context versus other sports? Yeah, I, I'm I'm really not sure. It's uh it's a hilarious thing, and uh, I, like I said, it, it's if Canada qualifies, it'll rock because that means like just the players are just rock stars, and they didn't really need the cheating to uh to be good. So uh, we'll see. I mean, they're playing like it. I mean, they're buzzing. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing like what happens here with Team Canada and how they b battle this adversity. Because obviously, I, like I said, I, I don't think the girls knew. So it is kind of a shitty thing to something that's out of your control kind of knock you down a couple notches in terms of like seating and you have like you can't have no control over it sucks it, it really sucks for sure for sure well let's switch gears a little bit talk about the olympics as a whole have you made any bets have you won anything what have you been watching what kind of what kind of action you've been getting into in the olympics i've been so locked far? into soccer man i i okay. like uh, the women's soccer and I, i'll say this i didn't realize rugby sevens is electric oh it's sick it rugby yeah. sevens is sick it's the shortest sporting event ever it's literally seven minutes like i think both halves are 14 or the, the game is four games minutes. 14 minutes yeah it's yeah fast. it's bananas like the game starts and it's just done it's like immediately fucking done it's unbelievable uh i've been locking into that obviously i've been betting uh team canada women's soccer because it'd be just un un-canadian of me for to not do that um but yeah i've been i've been i've been locked in i've been not uh, paying attention here to uh 
to Team Canada. I've really been watching other sports, but I've watched like Simone Biles as well. Like she's unreal. Some of that stuff blows my mind. Some of the stuff they do. Yeah, we were watching the gymnastics earlier and just like I don't know how it's even humanly possible to like <laughs> get as much air and rotation like from a standing position like as a human being. It's 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 next to impossible. I think for me, like when I see like sprinters or swimmers or, you know, track stars, they're training their whole lives to be as good as they are in these events. But I look at gymnastics, I'm like, as much as that is training, there's got to be God given intangibles that you have to be so good at this stuff. Yeah, it's it's something it's like, I, I don't know how it's humanly possible that the human body can do that. It, like the Simone Biles stuff, like the flip she does is just right. It's unfathomable the stuff they do. I, I wish I knew how to like bet on it. Like I don't know, how, I don't know how to like actually bet on it because like that would be a cool thing to bet on, obviously. Um, but yeah, like the shit that Simone Biles does is like all you can do is just tip your cat. It, it is unbelievable. She rocks. She rocks. No, I agree. Like I think that's yeah. I'm not sure how to bet on that, but that's definitely something where it's like like do you, you see podium? her name. Or you see two, Team USA, you got to bet on that gymnastics. But yeah, like, do you just bet podium? Like, how, how do you probably guess, podium? Because again, it's like subjective scoring based on judges, right? So yeah, over unders isn't like, you know, a yes or no case. So I guess it, it's, it'd be a bit harder, but you know, it's not as easy as like basketball or tennis where it's like certain scores you have to hit. So yeah, that's true. I didn't know that, but yeah, it's uh something I wish I can get into just gambling wise. It's like I feel like Simone Biles is a cheat code to bet on. Yeah. <laughs> well, so is our so is our pal Summer McIntosh yeah, after the event wrong, last man. week. It, Easy. She, didn't win, she didn't win the actual event that my buddy gave out where it was oh. like, what was it, plus uh two fifty, right? Yeah. She didn't win that event. She she won the uh the event she was like minus two thousand and she has like yeah, a the women's record. I think it was four hundred meter medley. She won that. Yeah. She's just, slide she's, victory. She, she's a literal cheat code in that. Like she's literally like the greatest to ever do it. She's like the world record. Um, she's just insane. So shout out Summer McIntosh, man. I didn't know she was se is she 17? That's correct. So probably gonna be in the next few Olympic games as yeah. well. So new star for Canada. Yeah. And we talked last time about the over-under on gold medal six and a half. Canada currently at two. Oh so no. It's gonna be tight. It's gonna be tight. I think it's gonna come down to like six or seven here. So yeah, <laughs> two is crazy. Summer McIntosh has one, and then the and other then we one won and, one in uh, women's judo. Judo, yeah. So it's judo and Summer McIntosh. That's not good. Two <laughs> gold medals is not good. But I mean, women's soccer that could be a three. We talked about hammer throw. We have two locks there potentially. Uh, you know, Andre DeGrasse yeah, has a couple of events. Doing the sprinting yet, right? Sprinting's in like no. The men's week. tracks a little bit later, but Andre DeGrasse is in a couple events. Yeah, uh, Damian Warner with decathlon. I believe that's in a few days. So yeah, there's hope for a, a second half surge and not to switch gears here, but maybe men's basketball. We could see a gold medal. They are a wagon, right? Like they are sick. RJ Barrett is a dog. I, I, I can't even really foul. Like he's on the Raptors, which is crazy to me still. Like I still can't even believe it, but RJ Barrett fucking rocks, dude. Like I, I am all in on RJ Barrett. Even that game. I mean, you, if you watch that game, uh, what's his face gets two Sh Shea Gilligas gets uh, gets two fouls right off the rip quickly, yeah. And then RJ Barrett just like unloads the clip, just goes idiot zone the remainder of the game. He rocks. So yeah, USA is obviously beating the brakes off of South South Sudan right now, but we could easily see. I think there's a really good chance we see uh, Canada USA gold medal game. Give it to me. It's what it's shaping up to be. Obviously, yeah. France is right there as well. I mean, they got Wemby. If you've been watching, I mean, he's just dominating everyone with his size. Yeah. But yeah, Canada, I think the the disadvantage is with the big men. And so you got to face a team like France with Wemby. And then you get USA where you got Embiid, Anthony Davis, you know, big Bam out of bio, all these big guys. So it should be good. Canada's undefeated right now. I think they have Spain Friday or... Yeah. Saturday. So they've already qualified for the next round, which is good. I mean, look, this is probably one of the strongest teams we've had in years. It feels like the momentum's on their side. And as we saw with the preliminary, I know it's just preliminary, but USA almost lost to South Sudan. So all it takes is one <laughs> game. Crazy. You never know. You never know. And RJ Bear, I mean, Jamal Murray is a name that a lot of people were talking about going into the Olympics. He's been quiet. He had five points the last game. So 
Yeah. Wait till he starts picking up his game, and who knows what's going to happen with this team. It's just weird, like, just even having, like, a good Canadian men's basketball team. I mean, you look at the names on there. It's, like, just all dogs. Mm-hmm. Like, it's going to be cool. I, I'm looking forward to it. It just sucks, like, the games of, like, uh, too many days in between for me. But it, it is... um. It is gonna rock seeing what them go up against like actual powerhouse teams. I mean, they dominated. They they dominated um, their last one against Australia with Josh Giddy there. So yeah, uh, I am looking forward to seeing like what Team Canada does because it is cool seeing like just guys from like Hamilton and like Kitchener just face on like the world stage facing like actual like massive massive names. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, it's unreal. I remember Jamal Murray's from Kitchener, and one yeah. summer I think he went to. Uh, my buddy was on the Laurier basketball team. He went to train like one of the coaches of the Laurier team was like one of Jamal's coaches when he was younger. So he went to go train with the team and he was just playing pickup with them. And so it's crazy to think that guy's an NBA champion. That guy's in the in the Olympics. You, know, you always see American players reach these heights, but to see guys from like where you live and just nearby you do it, it's it's it's, it's insane. Yeah, they need to put baseball on it. I mean, obviously you can't. <laughs> like, I mean, you have the World Baseball Classic, which they just brought back last year for the first time in like I think it was 18 years, but uh it might have been a little less, maybe like 14 years, but uh the they need baseball in the Olympics. I want to see best on best. Uh, I want to see where Canada ranks against other countries. Obviously, you got like the Dominicans, Puerto Rico, Venezuela, but Japan. it would be cool to see like guys I grew up playing against um just playing in the Olympics. That, that, that's something that's been taken away from us, not having baseball in the Olympics. Well, apparently, it, it should be back in 2028 Olympics in, in Los Angeles, but hasn't been confirmed yet, but it is expected. It yeah, is weird. It's, it's all minor like, league players that go, though. It sucks. Like, the last Olympics, um, yeah, the last Olympics, I believe they did like a, it was like a COVID year thing, so they did it like in 2022 or 2021, and it was just all minor league guys. So it was like top prospects, uh, it wasn't like actual, like you didn't have Mike Trout, you didn't have Bryce Harper, you didn't have any of those guys. You just had like prospects for like the Jays or prospects for the Red Sox and stuff like that there. So it wasn't like the actual best on best, you know? I feel that. Like, did, would the MLB like let players go? Because they'd have to obviously it's take like a break NHL in the middle of the season. It's right in the middle of the season, which sucks. You know, it's like right in the middle of the season. So it, 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 you, it's not, you can't really do it. Because it'd be like what three weeks off, probably Two more. Because the training, training, and all that, it's probably a month. Yeah, so I, you can't. There's no logistic way to do it. Well, the NHL, I believe, 2026 Winter Olympics, we're back. We're gonna get. Yeah, that's NHL. gonna. Oh my god, that's gonna. Like be that's. Close. I mean, printing money here. Obviously, yeah. this is a hockey nation, and just they're gonna do that Four Nations Cup next year, which is it's, it is what it is, right? There's only four yeah. teams in it. It's yeah. more of an exhibition showcase. Having the Olympics. And Canada, USA, like that's one of the biggest rivalries in any sport. To see it in basketball this summer would be pretty cool. But yeah. hockey is really where this is where the bread and butter is. Yeah, I yeah, uh, it's uh ho- hockey for me, that's international where I get up the most for. Like, yeah. the, like my favorite international sport is is hockey. Cause it's like the te- the the playing field is so it's not so level. Oh my god, Canada goal, folks. Canada goal. We're at one nil. One nil. Oh, live updates. Go. Live updates. Live updates. But people already listen to this already know if they win or not. But <laughs> uh, I will say uh, it, it is like for me, I don't know if Sean could does agree. Uh, Sean agrees with this, but um, the Olympic hockey is the greatest. It's the greatest thing on the planet. Maybe I just have the greatest memories of it because of the golden goal from Cindy Crosby. But Olympic hockey is not. It's the best. and It's not even close. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the best of the best playing, you know, for the country. A lot of pride. A lot of open hockey, so that that that's why I like it the best too. It can get chippy at times, but it's a lot of skill, uh, a lot of you know, big big moments. You know, the, uh, the juniors with Jordan Eberle, the Sidney Crosby golden goal. I mean, there's just so many big moments, and and, and it happens every four years, and that's why it's spectacular. So I'm I'm, I'm very glad that it's back too. Yeah, that's I love good- it, man. I uh, is Crosby 100? percent I mean, is he confirmed to be in the next one? He will be. Um, I mean, it'd be up to the coaches, but he he'd be old. But I mean, he'll he played be, really well he'll last be year. Pretty fucking old. He he's played really well 30, last year. He's gonna be thirty eight. But like, I remember the twenty ten team. They had like Niedermeyer, Pronger, like a bunch of older guys as well. So okay, if he's in the league still, there's no way Sidney Crosby isn't making the team as a formality. Okay, okay. I can't I can't see a world where Canada has an Olympic team and Sidney Crosby's still healthy and and not I'm just playing. thinking like. 
it is a goddamn shame we we didn't get like McDavid and Crosby together in both their like I'm not saying McDavid was in his prime, but McDavid like two years ago, right in 2022 when they should have done it, yeah. would have been like in his prime. Like this is when he's getting 200 point, 180 point seasons, and Crosby who was still technically in his prime on the same team, Canada would have beat the shit out of every team in that tournament. I, I in my opinion, obviously, I think. Well, 2026, we'll have the Connor Bedard, Connor McDavid. I think that'll be yeah. the big one. And then you probably have McKinnon on that team. Uh, maybe Marner. Uh, like, there's going to be a lot of big names at that stage. But obviously, the U.S. team's going to be loaded. You have Matthew Kachuk, Austin Matthews, Robertson. A lot of big dogs on the U.S. as well. Yeah, that's fair. I, yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's just something about hockey for me at the at the national stage. Uh, the sorry, the the world stage is so much cooler than me than base. Like baseball was fine, but no one plays in it because the pitchers don't want to get hurt. You know, it's like ba- baseball. Well, who who is ha- the closer for the Mets that got Edwin hurt? Diaz? He got yeah. hurt celebrating. Like, so what happened there? <laughs> he got hurt celebrating after yeah, a game. He got right? hurt celebrating. So it's like you can't. It's at the end of the day, it's like you don't really have best on best <laughs> with baseball. You know, so that's why hockey's the best because everyone goes full out. Everyone plays. It's the best. It's not even close. And I'm looking for. I will be betting on four nations probably. I mean, that's. Let's be real here. That's the. That's we will be betting on that. Yeah, it would be weird being in a scenario where you're not. You're you're booing Austin Matthews. You're booing Nylander. You don't want to see them succeed. You want to see them lose. That'll yeah. be an interesting feeling. Yeah, it's gonna watching be, Matthews yeah. score on your own team. That'll be an interesting feeling. What, what is the. What are the odds? Not to shift here, but what are the odds for uh, Team Canada women's to win this, to win the gold? It's got to be like terrible odds, right? If they if they pass through this, they're the best team left in soccer. Yeah, um, I don't yeah. know if it, it might not be up because they're playing right now. I think I think it's yeah, it'll it'll probably come up after the game. But before the tournament started, they were like third or fourth. Like they weren't a lock to win right before the tournament started. Okay, so I mean, France is obviously a heavy heavy uh, hitter. USA is pretty good. Spain, so. I mean, I, I'd imagine they're probably top coming out of this game, assuming they win, but I, I wouldn't rule out France or USA. Yeah, that's fair. I, I, I just, like I said, I, it'd be so funny if they got deducted six points and won the tournament. That'd be rock star oh, shit. Yeah. That'd probably be the coolest thing that's ever happened to this country, sports-wise. It'd be sick. Up there, for sure. Yeah. One, la- one last point on uh, the Crosby stuff. I mean, I mean, we're seeing LeBron do it at 40. I mean, I know it's different. Hockey's different, but... I mean, LeBron's carrying USA at 40. Crosby can still hold his own at 40, too, I think. LeBron's a super freak, man. I mean, yeah. completely agree. But, I mean, Crosby's in pheno- phenomenal shape, too. So yeah. I, I think I've got faith in Crosby still. Yeah, we'll see. Your I four to, centers I, for Team Canada are going to be Crosby, McDavid, Bedard, McKinnon. Oh, my God. Who's like, the fourth that, That's liner. your four-line centers right there. I don't even know who the fourth liner would like. Probably Bedard, I guess. Maybe Actually, Crosby. No, they'd, they'd split it up. They'd have they'd have one of them play the wing. Okay. You, that no way they're running that on the fourth line. <laughs> Bedard fourth line. You never I know. I mean, bet on that shit. Just I a actually, wealth of resources. That's going to be Team Canada. Yeah, I, I can't wait to bet on that, and I cannot wait to bet on NHL again. I forgot. I, I I don't realize how much I miss betting on hockey until we don't have hockey. Because I'm not like the biggest hockey guy, but there is nothing better than getting an empty net goal to hit the over. There's nothing better than getting a, a empty net to hit the puck line. Like it just, I miss betting on hockey. It fucking rocks. It, yeah, I can't wait. We're only a couple months away now, so I'm looking yeah. for. I, I cannot wait to bet on hockey. It's gonna be sick. I was in a groove towards the end of the year, just on a random night, just find a game that's going to overtime and just not even just live betting one side and just seeing what happens. Five minute bet. <laughs> it's yeah. so fun because like then it goes to shootout. You didn't watch the game. You have no idea who's gonna win. Those are the best. And then of course the Austin Matthews anytime bet, one of my favorites to make, just because every single night. For the most part, it's going to happen, but you, there's always a good shot if you're going to see it. Austin Matthews anytime goal scorer is the greatest like live bet if he hasn't scored in the first period yet ever. I'm sure I'm sure the hit rate's not as high, but every time I do it, it, it cashes. So this is we are they, they, it just goes to show you, man. We are in the dog shit times of gambling right now. We're literally like baseball sucks to gamble on. <laughs> like I, I uh, this is a funny story. There was a beat yesterday on my on my timeline that I saw. Someone hit an eight-leg parlay, or it was a nine-leg parlay. They hit eight legs of, like, total bases, guys to get a hit, and the last leg was Justin Turner, two-plus bases. He got a single in his first at-bat, and the Jays traded him after his at-bat. So the guy lost the bet because he had one hit, and they took him out. So he played. That's so he not a void? Nine leg. What? That's not a void? Because no. he didn't play? 
he played. He he had an at bat. That's crazy. That's... So it's like he lost the parlay. It was plus forty five hundred or plus forty five. Oh 000. my god! And that was the last. That was the only leg that didn't hit because he got traded in the in the second or third inning. They took him out because they traded him. That's, that's why I mean you kind of got to be cautious when you're betting at this time of the year. I guess and it's like, trade deadline, yeah. Like yeah. that, that's not like the most unrealistic scenario. So yeah, that's it's pretty crazy. crazy. I would be putting holes in walls if that was me. Yeah, we were we were talking earlier, like Jason Tatum, game one for the US played zero minutes, zero points. Like if you took the over on Tatum in that game, he was active, but he didn't play a minute. Like yeah. how does that how does that so get if you scored? Took the under, you're laughing. Yeah, if you bet yeah. Jason Tatum unders, but again, is it void because he didn't play a minute? Who knows? I know. I don't know what I'm the sure house rules are on that. They could probably get you on that, though, where it's like he didn't play, but if you had the over, if he was activated, they could probably play both sides there. They yeah, I'm can. sure they, they'd play it in their favor. But yeah. yeah, I mean, Olympic betting, we still got a few couple fun events coming up. Uh, the men's track, as you mentioned, some swimming events still, women's soccer, uh, some hammer throw track and field events, and then, of course, break dancing, which we, uh, we talked about <laughs> last week. Yeah. So. Phil Wizard, shout out Phil Wizard, Canadian hopeful for a medal in breakdancing. Let's see if that happens. Shout out Phil the, the Wizard. That that guy was born to be a breakdancing Olympian. His last name's Wizard. Well, it's his stage name. His oh, it's real. oh wait, they have stage names in the Olympics? Of course. His, his name's Philip Kim, but he goes by <laughs> Phil Wizard. So Phil Wizard. Phil I Wizard. thought that was his actual name. That would have robbed Phil, Phil Wizard. Guy. If you're shout watching. Out Phil Wizard. Can yeah. you bet on that? Like, what is the odds for that? Uh, last time I checked, he was like second from favorite. So the okay. U S guy was the favorite, but he's like right under him. So, I mean, if you're just a Canadian hammer, like just, just take that. Don't even think about it. Uh, Oh, breaking. Here we go. So Victor Montavio Montalvo Montalvo is the favorite for us. And then in second, Philip Kim for Canada, okay. Bill wizard. So. It takes place August 10th. So if you have nothing to do August 10th, bet on Philip Kim and enjoy breakdancing all day. Yeah, do that. I Sprinting's the best. I, I like the 100-meter dash the most because it just blows my mind that these people, how fast they run. Uh, I, I'm locked into that. The the uh, the hurt, not the hurdles, The uh, what, what's the team event with the baton? Relay, where they pass relay. to each other. Relay, that yeah. shit is sick. Because oh, yeah. I, I do feel bad. That's the event I feel the most bad for if someone screws up. Yeah, because it, it's on a national, like it's on a world stage, and if you drop the baton, you're done. Like you, you just screw your entire team up. So, uh, yeah, that one's electric as well. I, I enjoy a lot of those events. Yeah, that's crazy because it's like if you're doing an individual event, only one guy has to be perfect. Four guys have to be perfect. Yeah, for a, re a relay. So yeah, way more pressure on that. I would probably want to start with it, so I can't drop it. I just hand it off. But yeah. if you're the last guy taking that baton, holy shit, that's got to be nerve wracking. Yeah, it, it's sick. I, I do remember, like, I uh, wait, well, we grew up on like Usain B Bolt would just fuck. Would oh just, my god, he would dominate. I was watching his highlights on YouTube rounds. the other day. He yeah. won the gold in three straight Olympics. <laughs> that's ridiculous. And he would also do like the uh, the events like, where the, where you pass on the baton. Like that team was just full of like the fastest sprinters in the world. They would win by like a a trillion seconds. Oh, it was he was an animal. Though. That's what we grew up on. It was like we had the glory days. We had Phelps and we had Usain Bolt, just the two greatest of all time in their uh, respective sports. It's it, it's we we were we, what a pleasure we had uh, to have that growing up. It was sick. I feel like those two really popularized the Olympics because, like, again, prior to that, I was probably too young to like get hyped and watch the Olympics every week. But like, yeah. when you think about those two, when you or when you think about Summer Olympics, you think about those two athletes, and you want to see someone break their records which i don't believe someone has i think usain bolt still has the world record um, yeah you see, yeah he there's does, no definitely. stars like there's no like every like canada i guess we have stars the guys that you see in the olympics every year you're the grass penny alexia people like that but there's no like bona fide international superstars yeah. in the summer olympics anymore simone biles i guess is the only one okay so yeah i mean we're, we're really just craving and waiting for that next big star to break through here for sure for sure, I, I am too. Yeah, it's uh, I, 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 we, I mean, we have Summer Macintosh. We'll probably that's be true. There. That's our, that's our, that's our big so chip here. Our best bet, and, and Phil cool Wizard. Fact, yeah, and, and Phil Wizard. But it's cool the fact that she, like, it's a Canadian. Like, a, we have a Canadian Michael Phelps version where she, she just dominates all women's sports. She's seventeen. I mean, she came was plus like three fifty in that event, and she came in second, almost won. So, like, there's tons of stuff to be looking forward to for Summer Macintosh. Um, 
it's I will four years down the road, someone's not to remind me to bet on her. I'll oh yeah, my, mine is two thousand favorite at at seventeen years old. Like, what does that yeah, tell you? Ridiculous. So it's like it's her versus just bums, pretty much. Well, I mean, yeah, Olympic athletes, but bums, yeah. bums for yeah. sure. Bums compared to her. That's, That's what fair. I'm. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. Well, we talked a little bit about this last week. You mentioned the Blue Jays were going to be sellers at the trade deadline, which in fact they were. Quite a few marquee names on the move. If yet to give a letter grade to the Blue Jays on the trade deadline, who they got rid of and what they brought in return, what would you, what would you, what letter grade would you give the Toronto Blue Jays? Uh, probably a B plus. I mean, okay. uh, the thing is, like, I'll never be able to be like truly, truly happy about it because the dog shit team that Ross Atkins made is the reason why they're here. But the fact that they were able to get uh, the number two, number three or number two ranked prospect that was traded during the entire trade deadline for Yusei Kikuchi is a massive win. Like you Bloss? Kikuchi, yeah, Bloss. Okay. Yeah. So he, he was like, so I believe it was Baseball America ranked um, what the rankings are for like all the prospects traded. The Yankees traded their number one, like the number one ranked prospect uh, in the in the trade deadline to the Marlins. The Jays had the number two or three in Bloss. So um, it, it, they they made useful returns out of guys that were not going to be here after the season. And um, so, listen, it sucks, but it sucks having you say Kuchi gone. We've already seen the Jays have got blown out the last two games uh, with this minor league roster they have. But there is some fun things to look forward to for next year. Like like I said, like you said, Bloss, uh, Joey Loperfido. The guy they got for IKF is pretty good. He's he has like a 920 OPS in double A. So there's tons of stuff to like actually be like, all right, like this isn't like the worst, worst of the worst, but we have to watch a terrible baseball team at the Rogers Center uh, for the remainder of the year. And we're worried about 2025 now. So it, that yeah. part sucks, you know? So if, if you're a Jays, well, I guess there's not many Jays betters left. If you're a Jays fan or slash better, What's the, what's the lean here? It seems like overs have been printing recently. Team totals for whoever the Blue Jays are playing have been printing recently. Any sort of inside advantages we can take here to kind of enjoy the Blue Jays the rest of the way here? Uh, bet against them. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like today, they were minus one and a half, minus 120. They were facing one of the best offensive teams in baseball. And they had Paulo, Jays had Paulo Espino on the mound. It was a 90 RA in the show. And the Jays were minus 120, or the Orioles were minus 120 for minus one and a half. Just criminal shit. Like, that's what you got to do. You just got to just literally bet against them. That's okay. the only way you can enjoy this and make money is by betting against them. And today was a clear cut. Like, my group chat had minus one and a half, minus two and a half, minus three and a half. All that hit. They they lost by four. Uh, oh, they, by they bet on the Jays. Why? No, no, they faded the Jays. Oh, they faded the Jays. Okay. Yeah, they had the Orioles like minus one and a half, two oh. and a half, three and a half. Um, and I believe actually four and a half might have hit. It was 10 four, yeah. So that yeah, that, so that, yeah, that they, yeah, they hit, they covered all the way to five and a half, and five and a half was like plus plus six eighty. So it's like there was tons of money to be made today. And I wish I put more against them because they they stink, and this is what they're gonna be like for the remainder of the year. They're in a rebuild mode. So, so alternate run lines against the Blue Jays moving yeah. forward is the play. Like, okay. for example, like I know the show drop next week. Next shows show drops next week. Uh, they face like they face uh, who do they face next week, which is a good one to bet against them. Like they face uh, they play some shit teams here. Actually, fuck. If you're listening to this podcast, actually, they face the Orioles next week at home, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It is betting against the Jays every game in that series. They're going to get worked every game. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, they're, right. they're, oh, Canada's just fumbling here. Uh, yeah, they're going to get worked every game. And listen, they don't have a number five starting pitcher right now. They threw Paulo Espino today, who has like a seven ERA in AAA. If you see Paulo Espino on, even if you can bet minor league baseball games, you bet against that man. He throws 88 <laughs> miles an hour. So today, I wish I would have texted you about this earlier. This would have oh. been the easiest money you could have made for your life was today. It was like a mortgage play. Um, I think Sean cashed against the Jays today as well. Yeah. So not alone here. That's but. the only way you make money. Like, like that's the only way you can enjoy this team is by going to the game and silently betting against them. Cause that's like, they're going to lose majority of their games left. So like that's the only way you do it. I like that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna go to a game and bet against them. That'll be fun. But 
did Ross Atkins, like you said the deadline return was decent. Would you say that he kept his job with the Jays or you still think he's 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 done here? No, I think he kept his job. As much as I hate to say it, like he obviously probably kept his job. Um, hmm. I, I, like, I was under the impression, and I might have said this on the show, is like this is his make or break year. Like if they don't make yeah. the playoff this year, it's over. Like for him, if they don't do well in the playoffs either. Uh, <laughs> well, unfortunately, I feel like next year will be that year. Just like we're talking about, like it was with Dubis, probably where he had the game. It rolls over. Year. You're saying he gets one more chance because of the return on deadline day, yeah, or just I purely because that, of the organization. Either that, I, I actually don't know, but I, um, I feel like uh, this this might be another year left we have with Ross Atkins because of okay. not because of the trade deadline, a little bit because of it, but a massive part of it is because of the fact that th three out of the four year out of the last four years they did make the playoffs. So. Okay. Didn't win, but they didn't make the playoffs. Okay. Well, all we can hope for is he re-signs Vladdy before he gets the boot. So yes. that's all we can ask for. That would probably put him over the finish line about people being like, all right, like I know majority of people don't want him back, which is fine. I've said fire him as well. But if they can figure out an extension with Vladimir Guerrero Jr., then I could be like, All right, you know, it's like now let's just build around the guy, you know. And uh they've cleared they're under the collective bargaining tax now. Uh, so they do have some money to spend next year, but, um, it just sucks that we're talking about 2025 in 2024. July. Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. In July, in the middle yeah. of the season. It sucks. It's, it's absolutely miserable. And I, it's, it was literally my worst nightmare. I didn't, I did not expect this to happen. <laughs> I expected this team to be a wild card team. I never said they were going to win the division. I said them to be a wild card team and maybe win a playoff series. Now they are like plus 40,000 to make the playoffs. And they just stink. So this is the worst case scenario for it for the Toronto Blue Jays. Well, hey, they're in a, they're in a tough division. Cut them some slack. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, the that's, what, we'll, that's what we'll say. They're in a yeah. tough division, yeah. just like the it, it's a good spin zone. Yeah, I mean, it's easy narrative to fall, but yeah, like I will take your advice fading the Blue Jays alternate run lines moving forwards. But I do want to end here with uh, some baseball parlay winners that we saw recently. Uh -oh. So the we worst got some on. The worst Last week we up. saw we saw one, one of the biggest winners we've ever had in the history of the segment of this show. We got a crazy one this week, not as big, but I'll let you know. One better at Sports Interaction turned fifty dollars into ten thousand two hundred and fifty on a ten leg MLB parlay. Did you say fifty dollars? Fifty dollars, ten grand on a ten leg parlay. When the fuck is that going to be me, dude? That I don't is know. insane. It, I, I won't read all the legs. You'll see the graphic on the screen here. Ten legs, uh, eight money lines, two run line spreads. Just an easy payday for this guy or girl. I mean, all you wagered is 50. So this is one of the lower wages we've seen on the parlays. But 10,000 plus, plus insane odds. I don't even want to say the number. Plus insane odds. What would odds. that be? Like plus 200,000? I have, I have the graphic here. Sack, but this was this was one of the bigger odds I've ever seen. Plus twenty thousand four hundred. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Do you think he's mad he didn't put a hundred? Because that would be like a two hundred. Yeah, I mean, that'd be pretty greedy, you know. <laughs> if, if you're sitting there going, "Fuck, I should have put more money on it." I mean, you just won ten grand off of fifty. You go to a Jays game, you get a uh, two beers. You probably at fifty bucks. You put that on a ten leg. He's got ten grand. I will say this, like I, I felt surgical yesterday. I hit a parlay, fifty dollars paid seven hundred. It was okay. Gar Guardians money line, Josh Naylor home run, who always hits a home run on Tuesday. It's absurd, and uh, Jose Ramirez two plus bases. And Jose Ramirez had a, a dinger in like the seventh or eighth inning for it to cash. I felt like that was me that just hit a fifty to ten thousand. It was fifty for seven hundred. I cannot imagine how this dude feels fifty dollars. For 10K. Like, that's like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, I was looking at the scores. I'm pretty sure every game was at least a win by two runs. So, not even that big of a sweat for this man. So, kudos to you. I mean, the challenge is always out there. You guys seem to keep bringing in crazy parlays. I do want to share one more parlay with you. Not necessarily the biggest winner of the week, but something that certainly caught our eye here. Uh, one better took $5 and turned it into 3100 on six legs oh of God. minor league Brazilian soccer games to end in a draw. That's got to be some fixed shit. 
That's that. I'm looking at it right now. Um, I can't pronounce any of these team names. Yeah. Uh, D- Deportivo Munez, uh, Deportivo Armin. Like I can't even pronounce these names. I'm pretty sure it's minor league Brazilian soccer. No. Six games to end in a tie. They all did five bucks in the 3100. Good for them, man. You know, good for them. That's 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 uh that's just knowing your shit is what that is. Well, the thing is though, like you can't even sweat that. Like you can't watch that, right? Yeah, I'm not sure where they even had enough of knowledge of these teams. Uh Tristan Tristan Suarez FC. So it's a team in the Argent third division of Argentine football. So oh mix God. of Argentine and Bra- Argentina and Brazil third league football draws. You know what that was? That was a bet uh, that that guy made. Uh, just he was bored. It was like because the time changed, so they play a little bit earlier, I believe, in the day. He yeah. was like, "Oh shit!" It's like what ten o'clock a.m. Like, let me just throw this six legger in for shits and gigs to see if this hits. That's exactly what that was. That was not a predetermined. I'm specifically going. To watch this shit. It worked. Uh, it worked, though. I, I, it worked. Credit to that guy, because that is insane. So, um, first of all, you're a lunatic for even putting that bet in, obviously. But it's crazy. And, and the thing about the guy with the plus, the, the $50 to 10000 it's like, um, he put that in with no expectations of that hitting. Like, zero. No, that if was you put just, a 10 leg, you're, it's, it's a, it's, you put it in, it's a prayer. You're not even yeah. you're probably checking each game. It's more just like, oh, shit, we're close. And then, yeah, oh, no, shit, exactly. I, I, there is no way he sweat 10 games in a day. That's insane. Uh, that That's ridiculous. But um, my boss did this, actually. He, I forgot what he did. He did, uh, he had 10 bets in every single game in uh, a day, every MLB game. It was hilarious. It's a hilarious. Ten, same bet. same game bets. Same game parlays. Yeah, like ten, like just not same game parlays, but just like oh. singular bets. It's, they call it like the Phil Mickelson something. Okay. It's like a challenge they do oh. where they have uh, ten ten bets in each game, each MLB game. It's insane. I don't know how it's profitable, but uh, it it is a funny challenge to do. That's that should be like a ten. It's yeah, it was ten bets a game. So there was like what sixteen games. It was like one hundred and sixty bets in one day. Oh shit. Well, yeah. I mean. If it works, it works. A win is a win, right? I mean, yeah. this guy, I just found the odds for this parlay was plus 62,000 for the soccer tie. So, I mean, <laughs> that is so crazy, That's dude. the kind of people we have in, in at Sports Interaction I respect here. it, man. I'd love to. Like I said, I, I wish we could, like, we should try to see if we could talk to the technical team and see if we could, like, interview the guy that hit that. Like, I would love to just, like, you know what I'm saying? Cause it, I would love to just like see what he was like, what his thought process was to put in a fifty dollar parlay that paid ten grand. Cause like that's just like you know that's not hitting, right? Unless he's a crazy person. He was like, yeah, this has a pretty good chance, you know. Well, that's what I mean. What we don't know is how many days in a row did he bet ten leg parlays to get this one, or is this yeah, his first time? Good. Like, that, is this his good. first time ever making a bet? Has he yeah. made eighteen fifty like fifty dollar uh, parlays or, before? Bro. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. Because you can make that. I mean, the odds on that, obviously, it's it says there's like a less than 0.0001% chance of you hitting that. So yeah. there's a chance you can make that type of bet every day for the rest of your life and never hit that, you know? So it, it, it is wild. I mean, I'd love to see and if he's done that before, but uh, it is it is, a, it is cool to just see like these success stories that people have because when you hit a bet like that, you're never going to be down, I would assume, in gambling for the rest of your life unless you just get really greedy. But I, I could imagine it's like you're in the clear forever. Yeah, well, there, there's two types of gamblers, right? Winners and quitters. So, yeah. you know, if you, if you, I mean, this is, I don't know if I should be saying, if you just keep going, eventually you're going to strike gold responsibly, hopefully, but you yeah. never know. Yeah, and you'll also eventually probably lose. So it's like, it's <laughs> like a little bit of both. That's you the win, beauty you of win it. some, you lose most. That's, That's how the beauty You just got to do it responsibly, do it in your means. And uh, you'll have a good time doing it, but it is, it is. I, I still can't believe like $50 to 10,000 is like, unf- I can't even really wrap my head around that. Like, that's crazy. That's just, it's that's insane. just good like, omen. Transfer, like how you wire transfer, I guess. I don't even know how you it's would. aura. That's aura. Yeah. That I don't aura. know what it is, but I mean, that's, we'll be back with hopefully, I mean, once NFL season rolls in, oh, I NBA cannot, season, wait. NHL season, I can only imagine the parlays we're going to see printing here. I've seen some from past years. It's unbelievable. So I can't wait. Challenge stands. If you think you can beat these guys, go for it. Prove it. Make your parlay at Sports Interaction. Win, and you'll be featured on this show. Yeah, and 
we're here. I mean, NFL is this Thursday. We got a little uh, Caleb Williams is not playing, which kind of pissed me off because I wanted to see him play. Yeah, but that's kind of a tough blow. Like, yeah, it's uh, the Hall of Fame game, man. Playing the Hall of Fame game. How some shame. It's, it's uh, the most. It's probably going to be the most viewed preseason game of the season because no one else has anything to do. It's a Thursday in August. Yeah. Right. So, and there's not usually a lot of baseball games on Thursdays either because that's their travel day. It's like the Jays don't play tomorrow. There's like five or six teams that don't, or there's probably more that don't play tomorrow. So there's literally nothing on the TV because majority of the teams play during the day. So sure. I will be watching until probably the second quarter. For sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll be watching. I think by the next time we film, we'll have some NFL futures up and we'll talk some football here. Uh, no show next week. You're uh, be going on a nice tropical vacation here. So looking forward to that. Hell yeah. Yeah. So that'll Hell be yeah. fun. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this has been fun. Enjoy the Olympics, people. If you want to bet baseball, you want to bet against the Jays, you want to bet for the Jays, you want to hit some crazy parlays, you want to bet on the Olympics, make sure to download Sports Interaction today and make your bets right now. Your homegrown sports book, Bet Local. Talking shit.